me take a moment and, and bring you up to date since we ended at a particular point on um, when was we together last Wednesday? We we didn't right. That was Fourth of July. Okay. All right. Um, keep in mind when we started out. We're still yet dealing with our theme, Don't Worry, God Got You. And the focus was on worry, dealing with how we as Christians uh, get sidetracked in not trusting God. So we laid out that there would be three guidelines that we would follow as it relates to what Paul uh, was teaching us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, where Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always as a result of that we've already dealt with two of those guidelines you can check your notes to make sure that you have them the very first one that we discussed was that it takes commitment and commitment is what we focused on in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 okay where Paul says rejoice in the Lord always <coughs> Again, I will say rejoice. So the first uh, guideline, and we walked through what commitment meant and all the details taken out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. The second guideline that we dealt with was found in Philippians chapter 10 chapter 4 verses 10 11 and 12 and it is here that we move from commitment to contentment okay from commitment to contentment and the apostle Paul helped us a great deal with his statement in Philippians chapter 4 beginning with verse 10, where he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you care for me, your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Then he says, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Then in verse 12, he says, I know how to be abased, how I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both abound and to suffer need. So you should have in your notes two of the guidelines. One, commitment. Secondly, contentment. On tonight, we are to go to our third guideline, the third and final guideline, all under the heading of the, the one uh, bullet praise. That was how... We started out talking about one way in which Satan comes after the believer is to destroy your praise. So on tonight, we are going to pull apart Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And it is in this verse that you're going to deal with our third guideline, which happens to be confidence confidence so keep in mind you got three C's commitment contentment and now confidence I want you to hear what Paul says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me First thing we need to point out is that here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Apostle Paul gives us a strong indication 
of his confidence. But we got to pull it apart. I need you to understand that before we pull it apart, Paul is not boasting, nor is he bragging. Okay? So often sometimes, as Christians, there are moments we need to speak with confidence and people think you might be bragging or boasting, and you really are not. You're just certain in who it is. So when Paul speaks to us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, he wants us to know that this is not a statement of a person who always gets their way. Am I making sense? So when you hear him say, I can do all things, he's not boasting, he's not bragging, and he's not pouting as if he's an individual who always gets his way. What the verse literally is, it happens to be the testimony of a godly individual who recognizes the indwelling power of Christ in his life. Everybody got me? He recognizes that the power that dwells in him comes from the Lord. Okay? So Paul, at the time in which he writes verse 13, was no doubt thinking he could bear any trial, any situation, any circumstance, any problem, simply because Paul had learned a secret. And that's what we're going to deal with tonight, is the secret that unfolds in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul, in essence, makes this statement as a divine call regarding trials, tribulation, and troubles. And I want us to make sure we understand how he could arrive at making such a statement. Now, you can't lose what I've already given you, okay? Commitment and what? Contentment. So you gotta you gotta put the connection between the other two. You gotta know that in your relationship with God, you are what? Committed. Then you got to know that whatever he takes you through, y'all got me? Whatever you are confronted with, you have developed a spirit of contentment you got me that means in whatever state you have found yourself in you have learned how to be what content now he turns around and says in the midst of your commitment and your contentment I need you to make sure you never lose sight of your confidence, right? Now, why, why is that important? Confidence is necessary because we like to time God. And when we can't seem to get a grip on what God is doing, we lose it. And Paul is going to teach us tonight, that's not how we are supposed to act. In other words, Paul is saying, I want to carry you so deep tonight that I need everybody to recognize that even if you think you are left in the trouble, your level of confidence while catching hell ought to be of such. Paul makes this statement. Let's go to Romans Chapter 8, verse 37. 
Now, before I read this, I need to establish something. There is absolutely nothing wrong with acknowledging human weakness. Does everybody hear me? I think sometimes we, we try to be all that. And what you put on the outside doesn't exist on the inside. And as a result of that, we crumble. Now, if there is nothing wrong with acknowledging human weakness, let me tell you where we are wrong at. We then become wrong when we fail to trust completely in the power of God. Am I, does everybody, everybody got me? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Now, why is that important? Because sometimes you have to recognize your weakness to appreciate his power. Woo! Listen to Paul. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, he says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, as much as I want to just drop that and go on to the next verse, I can't. I got to show you something. Notice what Paul says. <clears throat> He says, yet in all these things. What things? Paul is talking about tribulations, distress, persecutions, famine, nakedness, peril. Just the idea of dealing with stuff. Does everybody hear me? So when he says yet. In all these things. But you can't stop there. Look at what it says. We are more. Now notice. He didn't say you were just a conqueror. More than a conqueror. I got to talk about that for a minute. So we can get the idea of what Paul is actually saying. Here's the deal. More than conquerors is derived from, in the Greek, one single word. It is a word that Paul used that is extremely rare, okay? And it is combined, watch the text now, it is combined with a preposition for over, which simply means to have the victory. Now, see, don't y'all get lost. Stay with me. Before trouble comes, you already got victory. Boy, I hope y'all. Everybody with me? You go in the situation knowing you're going to come out what? Victorious. Now, here's the, here's the catch. Sometimes God doesn't move you out of a situation in a timely manner of when you want to come out. Everybody got me? So listen to what Paul is saying. Although you are still in the storm, got me? The storm won't destroy your testimony. In fact, if you ride the storm well, it'll increase your testimony. Why? Because you are not flying in failure. You are flying in victory. You don't see how you're going to work it out. You don't know how you're going to work it out. You don't know when he's going to work it out. All you know is he's going to work it out. Whew. So Paul says that we are what? More than conquerors. Now, I need you to just underline more. We are more than conquerors simply because 
we do not just survive our problems, we triumph over our problems. See, sometimes God gives you an opportunity to do both. Anybody can instantly be rescued. But not just anybody can ride something out. That's difference, okay? And there are moments that sometimes we have to learn how to survive in a problem. Survival skills. And you might say, well, why don't God just step on in? Why, why don't God just do such and such? Why don't God do this? Why doesn't God? But you fail to realize while you are in a problem, in a storm, you become a problem because he's trying to work on you. So you can develop survival skills. Now, what kind of survival skills do you need? First, sometimes we have ideas that we think will work. And God has to empty you of your ideas. Once, oh boy, once he empties you of your ideas, he can then pour into you his agenda. Boy, I hope I'm making some sense. Does everybody hear me? But Because y'all do know we will ride out what we think. And, and sometimes that becomes our prayer. We pray to God and tell God, now, now, now look. And some of us give God a recipe. We literally tell God how he ought to do something. So sometimes in the midst of a situation, he has to let you run out of your suggestions. He has to let you run out of your ideas, and out of nowhere, he steps in. Why is it overwhelming victory? Watch what he said. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How? Through him who loved us. Ah. Now you, you can recognize that if you sense or see yourself where God looks like he's moving too slow, you got to know you got his love. You got his love. He loves you without any doubt, any, any hesitation. He loves us. And it's hard to see God's love when it looks like we feel like we're being punished. You ever felt like that? You ever prayed and it looked like God answered everybody's prayer down the street and just didn't, didn't put nothing in your mailbox? You ever been there? Okay. All right. So Paul did not display weakness, nor did he display arrogance when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does everybody hear me? That was not his attitude. That was not his, his mentality. All right. Looking back now, at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, two things, two major bullets. The problem is, I need, need you to be aware of, and that's this. I cannot teach the verse in the order that is written. Everybody with me? So if you all would allow me, I need to go and take the ending first. And it's, it's nothing wrong with what I'm talking about because when I share with you what the two bullets are, you'll better understand. What I want you to write down in your notes is that we're going to talk about the source of his confidence. The source of his confidence and then we're going to talk about the results of his confidence. You got me? Now you can understand why 
I need to deal with the source first. <laughs> you got me? Because I can't talk about results and you don't know where your results come from. So we flipping the verse backwards. Just look at how he reads it now, how Paul shared it with us. Paul says, I can do all things. That's the results. Well, where, 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 where did the results come from? The results came from a particular source. And he tells you at the end, through Christ who strengthens me. Woo. Everybody got it? So we're going to start at the end and then work our way back to the front. So the first thing Paul says, and this is where we're going to talk about the source of this confidence. Paul says, through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody got it? All right. Here, here's, here, here's the proof of this, 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 this idea of the source. The source Paul mentions in the, in the verse. I need you to put two lines under through Christ. Okay? Because the phrase through Christ literally proclaims the source of the apostles' sufficiency. So before we go any further, Paul already acknowledges why is this important. And the reason I had to take the time to tell you he's not bragging because he started the verse off with a pronoun. And the pronoun was I. But he wants y'all to know that the I ain't got nothing. <laughs> you, you, you're with me? But he wants you to know where the I comes from. Whatever I got, I got it from somewhere. So that's why through Christ proclaims Paul's sufficiency. Paul did not just say who strengthens me. I need you to underline or write down the word strengthen. Okay? This word is very rare, but Paul uses it in several passages of Scripture. Okay? The very first one. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Now, now, don't, get the, don't look for this. I need you to understand the concept. He says, so then faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Whew. The issue then for a believer to recognize that it is through Christ is when your faith begins to take control. Am I making sense to you? But you recognize where your faith comes what? From. It comes from what? The word of God. You know, we dealt with all of this on Sunday morning. Okay? Number two. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Okay? After then, a believer recognizes what faith actually is. Peter comes back and talks to us about the object of faith. Okay? Listen to what Peter does. He says, he indeed was 
foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. I can't answer for nobody but myself, okay? Just me. But you're going to end up with the same thoughts. Preachers, we have not figured out yet why he called us. When you examine yourself, you discover you got nothing to give him. To the point that you go, you got the wrong one. Okay? You got the wrong one. But before you even got here, before your mama and your daddy got together, he had foreordained a call on your life. <laughs> you sitting there now, all of you all, saved. And you probably in your mind went, I don't think I ever get saved. Not for some of the stuff I've done. And then yet you saved. Can I hurt your feelings? He already knew. Why do you think when the bullet was shot in the club, it didn't hit you? Boy, y'all just sitting here like, he, he don't know me like that. No, no. Let, let's, does everybody understand? Why am I saying all this? Because... Going back where Paul says, I can do, faith is what keeps all of that together. Third and final one, let's connect the two. In Romans 10, 17, we discuss that what faith is. We know now that faith comes where? From the word of God. Then Peter comes around in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, and talks to us about the object of faith. Now, what, let, let me explain what I, what I mean when I say the object of faith. Thank you. All right. If you're going to exercise faith, you got to have an object or else you don't have faith. You got me? So when I sit down, I'm sitting in a chair. I exercise the capabilities of this what? Chair. So that's my object, the chair. Where the object of a Christian's faith is Christ. It's the word. He just told us. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. If the word fails, it's not your fault. But guess what? The word can't fail. You got me? One more. Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 and 2. Now, after we've discovered what faith is, after we recognize the object of our faith, it is important that we understand the maturing process of faith. Listen to what Paul says. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the what? Flesh, but walk according to the spirit. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Does everybody get that? Give me the next verse. Then he says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Listen to me. What Christ has done has given me freedom, but I got an obligation. We enjoy the freedom in Christ, but we don't want the struggle that goes with the growing of our faith. Does everybody get where I'm coming at now? See, faith can only be faith when you recognize it's got to grow. Okay, you ain't see so many folk like to walk around and quote a scripture and they I got it. No, you ain't got it. You know how to quote the scripture. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to somebody who can take what the word says 
and put it into action. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Y'all getting it? All right. So Paul then can make such a precise statement in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I want to change something right quick. And you'll, you'll, you'll understand it. I'm not changing scripture. I'm dealing with translations. Take us back to Philippians 4.13. Listen to what Paul says. I can do all things through Christ mm, who strengthens me. Some theologians, some translations have taken the word through out. That's a preposition. And replace it with in. So it would read, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Watch this. Whatever comes before Paul, Paul recognizes that since I, he got me and I got him, I better see myself in him than just merely working through him. How, how, why is this important? I'm going to walk you through. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, listen to Paul. Therefore, if anyone is where, 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 he is a what? New Christ. He didn't say if anyone is through Christ. See, think about the word through. Through is like going through something. Okay? And coming out, all right. But when you are in him, it tells you that in essence, nothing can come your way that catches you by yourself. <laughs> Am I making sense to anybody? Does everybody understand? If I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, my attitude when trouble comes, I'm going where? Through. How can I say such? I can go through because I am in Christ. I'm in him and he's in me. Whew. Listen to Paul in Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To them God willed it to make known what are the riches of the glory of of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <sighs> I'm not messing with the text. I'm trying to show you people who say I'm just going through, that's just what they're doing. But when you are in Christ, you can step back and recognize, number one, I'm in him. He got me. I got him. What can I accomplish? I can go through. So the ultimate question one must ask, am I in Christ? Am I in Christ? Now watch Paul. Paul goes on, I'm, I'm back at four, Philippians 4.13. Paul goes on to say, who what? Who strengthens me. Who what? Who what? Strengthens me. Now, I want you to hear the word in your spirit. 
There's no need for nothing to be strengthened if you already got everything you need. I sure hope y'all getting this. Are, uh, do, do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you got, he said, who what? Strengthen. So the first thing, before I take you some other scriptures, Paul recognizes in the midst of situations, I'm weak. I have a problem with folk who talk a good game, but when the rubber hits the road, they crumble. Now, y'all understand? I mean, you've been around them kind of Christians. They, they, they never really been sick. They'll tell you, he, he is such and such. He's such. But the moment it knocks at that door, change their testimony. I'm not saying don't say those things. I'm saying make sure what you say becomes a part of you because sometimes when it just comes off your lips, he releases things to happen so it become a part of you. See, it's one thing to know he is a healer, but when you've been sick and know he is a healer, that's two different things. When ain't no food on the table and you pray and God makes a way, you got a different testimony than somebody who said he will provide. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy, listen to Paul. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. Woo, woo, woo. Because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Do y'all hear what the man is saying? That Paul is saying, in essence, God saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. To the point, he counted me faithful. He trusted me. <laughs> Why? Because I'm in Christ. And because I am in Christ, I have an obligation. Everybody got me? Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. All of these hangs on that word strengthen. Listen to what he says. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now, you, back it back up, Daniel. Because they sitting here like they didn't even see that. But the Lord stood with me. Let me stop right there. He did what? Whatever you are faced with. He stands. <laughs> he stands with you. How can I be assured of that? Watch Paul. And did what? He ain't just standing. He got his hands on me. So at my weakest, he steps in. This is what Paul said. And he did what? Strengthen me. So that the message might be what? Preach, which means now God had a purpose in strengthening him. If God brings you through something, please don't hold your head up high and act like you brought yourself. You didn't do that. You didn't, he didn't, you, you were brought through by him for a what? Purpose. Why do we have to be pumped up? God brings you through something and somebody got to beg somebody to tell another person how good God has been. I ain't understood that. We wait till the end of the year. You know, I look back. You can't look. Sometimes we don't got to the point. 
We can just remember what we did yesterday. And sometimes, sometimes you just got to tell somebody. Call a relative and just say, I just need y'all to know something. God has been off the chain in my life. I don't deserve nothing the man has done, but he's been mighty, mighty good. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but I just had to call your auntie just to tell you. I was just sitting here, and tears of joy began to flow out of my eyes because I just had to let somebody know. So don't, don't go calling no ambulance. I'm all right, but I just got to tell you. <sighs> so that the message might be preached fully. God don't do nothing halfway. So sometimes the greater the storm, the greater the testimony. Oh, boy. Am I making any? Whew. And that all the Gentiles might what? Hear. Now hear the part. Flip it, Daniel. Watch it. He says, also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now, now y'all got to stay with me. He couldn't have said it if it had never happened. <laughs> we so busy trying to remove the happenings. The happenings is what gives birth to your testimony. Took me out. The lion could have chewed me up in pieces, but he took me. All right, all right. One more Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All three verses talked about strength. Everybody got me? All of them. Christians, we, we've been called, and it's tough to try to be strong. But you got to watch, and I tell y'all this all the time. If you hang around negative folk, they will let the air out of your balloon. I'm just here to tell you now. They, they, don't, they don't have no intentions of, of trying to accomplish nothing. They don't want to see you accomplish nothing. And you sit there and listen to them. Sometimes you have to say, look, I, can't, I, I don't need to hear that. I'm not trying to be funny. I tell y'all all the time, I don't need none of y'all's help. To be depressed. And nobody in here got to call me and say, you know, Rev. No, you don't know nothing. I can do that by myself. Whew. So why, why would I invite you in? Oh, boy, y'all looking at me like this man had lost his mind. So in the text, in the text, when Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's define strengthen. That'll solve everything. The word strengthen simply means to infuse strength. That's I-N-F-U-S, to infuse strength. So that means, boy, y'all got to get this. That simply means that God watches me so close, he recognizes the moment I get weak, it's almost like pulling the, 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 the cord out of the socket and the light's about to go off because I run out of juice. You got me? What he does is turns around and where I'm about to go out, he plugs into me. From another source. <laughs> he infuses me. And that's what makes people wonder. How can you make it under pressure? How can you do it? Easy. I know the secret. Whew. When you know without a doubt. Where your help comes from. You can make it. You can make it. I, I tell y'all all the time, boy, I look back over my life, and now sometimes I, I have to laugh at myself. I do. Because, see, I didn't know y'all then when my kids were real little. 
But but I used to get 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 about a dollar a little something. Go to, go get that's what it costs. Then now you go to Dairy Queen, you get a small uh, ice cream cone. It run you about almost two two dollars and fifty cents. But long time ago, it was just a little over a dollar. Poor y'all look at. And I used to have to sit there and eat that little ice cream and think my problems through. See, some of y'all make me look like I'm mentally off my rocker because I used to sit in the car and cry it out for a minute. You, you ever done that before? Because y'all looking at me like, he, he, he really messed up. No, y'all didn't understand what I'm, what I'm trying to show you. I had to get to a point that I needed him to infuse me. And the best way for me to do that was to empty what I was wrestling with. Because what I was dealing with wasn't going to fix it. So the word strengthen means to infuse strength. Let me give you a practical English language idea. It means to put power into. You want to know how I can make it? He puts power into me. When you don't even understand how you're going to make ends meet, he puts power into me. Oh, boy. So the strength then must not be something, got to be. And this is why I told you at the very beginning. It's not something that Paul conjured up. He wasn't bragging. He wasn't talking about I can do. He, you, you missed the whole boat if you think Paul is bragging and, and he mustered up this energy that he, no, this ain't something you conjure up. This is about a relationship that the man had with the Lord. In other words, it was a power that was infused into his life. Now, I got to remember you don't, you can't talk this way if you ain't never been weak. If you've always been all that and had it going on, God bless you, go on about your business. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to folk who got weak and you had to come to church and flip what was really going on, put it in a bag, and you put on the outside one thing. How you were really feeling was something totally. Whew. But God. Whew. All right, Daniel, I think you got Galatians. I got five more minutes. Uh, before you pull up Galatians, you get, let's stay there. Let's stay there. Listen to what Paul says. I can do all things. Where? Through Christ. And I told you, you got to be where? In Christ so that things, God can take you through situations. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Now here's the deal. What Paul is telling us is only available to people who are in Christ. Y'all got me? Listen to what he says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So you got to know that he's yours. Watch him in verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Does everybody see that? You got to know you belong to him. And I promise y'all, if you know who owns you, the owner never leaves. Colossians chapter 3, chapter 2, I'm sorry, verse 6. Listen to Paul. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so what? Walk in him. Everybody got that? Everything I've dealt with has talked about the source of Paul's what? Confidence. His source. The source. The source. 
The source. The source. Now, if you don't have the right source, you will never end up with the right results. Got me? That'll never happen. If you got the right source, you can have the right results. What are the results? Flip it back. Listen to what Paul says. I can do. And to make sure we don't miss it, he says, I can do all things. That's the results. That means you got to learn how to make use of your what? Source. So Paul's statement of confidence, where is it? Glad y'all asked me. Look at the verse. I can do. It did not originate from some egotistical concept. Paul had a relationship with Christ. But there's something in the verse before I tell y'all we're going home that y'all got to put two lines on. Do. The verb do stresses what I call a strength of the will which controls the feelings and the body. So even what he could do could. God from Zion. He couldn't do it on his own. Am I, does everybody get what I'm saying? The very thing. He said, I can do. Whatever I do, I can't do it without him. I'm breathing his air. He's given me the energy. I can't even brag. You can't boast about your brain. Because it ain't yours. And even tonight, we could wake up in the morning totally confused. Don't even know who we are. But God, I can what? Do. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Listen to what Paul says. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made what? Perfect in weakness. Boy, I'm going to show y'all something in this. Therefore, most gladly, will I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Back it right back up. Watch Paul. Listen to this. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is what? Let's go back to something. Go back to what we talked about earlier. When you are at your weakest, it's when God is at his best. Here's the deal. You can wake up every morning with the attitude, I, I got up this morning because of his grace. That's fine. That ain't, that ain't what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact of, look at, there's a word in the verse. Listen to this word. My grace is what? It's one thing to experience grace. It's another thing to experience the sufficiency of his grace. That means his grace takes care of you in any given situation. It's sufficient. It works. Not sometime. Not a few times. Not a hit and a miss. It's sufficient. I think sometimes in our minds we don't recognize I would rather wake up in the morning Watch some of y'all get angry at what I'm going to say now. And God has not answered yesterday's prayer. But I know one thing, when I put my feet on the floor, I'm, I'm experiencing the sufficiency of his grace. And since his grace never shows up to be wasted, God is up to something. 
pas. Asti, thank you. So let's, whew. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I started off telling y'all something. Paul discovered a what? What one word I told you? No. Start with an S. No. 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 Started with an S at the very beginning. No. Who said it? That's it. He, he discovered the what? Secret. Let me show it to you. Let, let, let me show it to you. I'm, I'm quickly show it to you. Daniel, if you don't have it on, on the screen, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 11. You, you got it? Listen to it. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? Content. Watch him now. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both abound and to suffer need. I think we miss all that. Paul is saying in every, it, it this. He said, every day ain't been sunny. There have been some days that the sun didn't shine in my life. But I can rejoice over the fact I know how to be hungry and I've experienced being full. Stay with me. Then he turns around. Watch this now. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. How can I do it? By learning how to rely on him. Sometimes God shuts doors to make us depend on him. He'll do it. I've been there. I've been there. Okay? Been there. I'm talking about been there. I, I remember in school praying, how am I going to pay my, my tuition? Okay? How, how am I? And back then, books were expensive, you know, but I, I said, God, what am I going to do? I'm going to show you how God opened up a door. I, wasn't, I was walking around. I said, God, I need a job. First job he gave me was to cook on campus. I cooked. I cooked. Oh, man. You going to get up and cook? Yeah, man, I cook. And God going to make a way. And it's funny. Them same cats who laughed at me always came by and asked for a little change. Okay? Okay? Not only did I cook, I was security guard. He, op he opened up a door. Then a crazy boy, me, ended up working at the mental hospital in Nashville. Crazy me working at the mental hospital. But I'm here to tell you something. I'm, I'm trying to show you something. I prayed for God to do something. He did it. Why would I step back and say, I got to do that? I got to do this? I got. He gave me strength. He gave me strength. And when it was time to march, didn't owe a dime. I'm finished with y'all.